My name is Tom, and I'm a retired engineer from NASA. I'm the son of a geologist, and so I had science in my blood from early on. I've always been intensely curious uh, and intensely analytical, but I've also really loved design and creating. So I worked in the area of design at NASA, at NASA for my 45 years. I was in the engineering organization and I worked on design teams that did everything from turbo machinery, that would be jet engines, to spacecraft that were gonna go to the moon and to Mars. And so I had a lot of experience in design, got in over my head a lot, uh, but thoroughly enjoyed it and enjoyed learning. But my experience in design has given me appreciation for the design that I see in nature, that we see in nature. And it exists all the way from the cosmic level down to the smallest atoms and, and molecules. Uh, design, especially for something as complex as a spacecraft, uh, requires a huge amount of capital, intellectual capital. That design is always done from uh, top down, so you don't throw together a bunch of pieces and you know say, what can we do with this? Instead, you start almost with a vision. You need inspiration, you, you need uh, insight, you need foresight, and so that's kind of where design begins, but you have to work yourself all the way down to the details because as we say, the devil is in the details and you know a bolt can break and that can cause your spacecraft to go up in flames. And so one thing that is required in design is functional coherence. So you have all these levels of parts and components and subsystems in a spacecraft and they all have to work together. The bolt has to support the function of the two parts that clamp together and those two parts have to support the function of a larger component and then those compo that component has to support the function of a, of a subsystem and then all the different subsystems of a spacecraft have to support the function of this overall system of the spacecraft and the mission that is to be accomplished. And that includes uh, thermal control, includes propulsion, includes power, uh, includes uh, navigation and control, uh, it includes all sorts of stuff and all these different systems that are required functions of a spacecraft in order for it to accomplish its uh, mission. And so as a result, spacecraft become very complex things. Well, now you look at life and when I look at life, I see the same functional coherence that's a result of a top-down approach that I see in the design of spacecraft, but I see it to the nth degree. I see something that's a result of a supreme intelligence that is uh, really beyond our comprehension. And so that's what you see in level. And, and the more we learn about the life, we learn we, we the, the more we learn about how awesome this, uh, the function, the coherence is all the way down to the cellular level and below, and as I've read more and more about biology and life, uh, the more in awe I am of, of our Creator, because our Creator is infinite in power. He's the giver of all life. Uh, he's omnipotent. He's um, all wise. He's all. He's he's good, and I see that when I look at life. And so that's that's a, a way that my. Um, experience in design really, I would say, enriches my faith. So I go on a walk in the metro parks and, you know, I see a spider crawling on a railing and I'm just in awe of this little uh, being with all the complexity just in a spider and making webs and, you know, spiders can actually fly. They can put up their uh, uh, strands into the sky and then the electrostatic potential, they can actually get lift and they can fly for uh, quite some distance. Might scare some of you, but I think that's pretty awesome. So, and then when I encounter people, I realize, you know, we started out from a single cell and as those cells reproduced, we ended up with a ball of cells or all identical cells, but next thing you know, inside the DNA, the switches are turned on and off and next thing you know, organs are being formed uh, and then they're being reoriented. They're all being stitched together into an integrated body, the human body, and we are the ones that result. And so I think it kind of goes along with David. Uh, David said that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And when I uh, look at the awesomeness of creation of life itself, it, it kind of makes me tremble, you know, at the awesome God uh, that we have. And when I look at someone, I can say they are designed, you are designed. And if you are designed, that means, number one, that there is a designer. Number two, that you have purpose. Because design means designer, and design also means purpose. And so you have purpose. And that purpose can be found in Jesus Christ. 
and it is revealed through the Bible. One of the things that has enriched my faith is all the imagery that we get back from our spacecraft. So NASA is always sending out telescopes and taking pictures of this and that. And one of the things that it's highlighted to me is how special Earth is. So Earth is a grand oasis, to quote from an astronaut, in the in the vastness of space. That it's a it's a beautiful place, and it's made for us. We're made for Earth. Earth is is made for us, and I think the more we dis uh, discover about the universe, the more um, the more we realize that Earth is a, v a very unique place. But also, as we explore the universe, we see how vast it is, and you know, it almost seems like it's keep getting bigger and bigger. Um, but you know, we're never going to reach the end of the universe, and yet, compared to God, it's nothing. And um, Julian of Norwich said, that "All that's been made is like a little hazelnut in the in the palm." of God. It's nothing. He holds all that in his palm. It's, it's, it's nothing compared to him. And so I think when we look at the vastness of our cosmos, it just highlights how awesome uh, and infinite God is. And also when you look how we're so easily s squished, you know, our sun could blow up, you know, we could have a supernova someplace else. There are objects in the universe that release the power of a, hundred, of a billion times our sun. And you have all these astronomical objects, merging black holes and all this stuff, and the energy that's released is immense. And when you realize it's nothing compared to the power of God. God's power is so awesome, so great. And so my love for science and my c connection with NASA through my employment has just enriched me as I, you know, um, have uh, contemplated all these things.